Hey, welcome back. Jeff Moody here. Jeff Moody MD, jeffmoodymd.com, jeffmoody.com, at Facebook on Jeff Moody MD, at LinkedIn, Jeff Moody MD. Um, I'm like a bad rash. You can't get away from me. We're, this is this week's talking about burnout uh, video tip. And today we're going to talk about how to change your habits for good. You might say, well, wh why does that matter? Like, we're talking about burnout. What, what, what does this have to do with uh, habits? Well, about 40% of your behavior and your actions throughout the day are controlled by habitual uh, motion or habitual uh, process. So I think if we're going to talk about uh, replacing habits that may be damaging you or harming you and replacing them with things that will help with your burnout, habit change and habit formation are good things to study. Uh, there have been two great books uh, re written recently, uh, one by Charles Duhigg, The Power of Habit, and also another one called Tiny Habits by B.J. Fogg. This is kind of my interpretation of their work, but essentially a, a habit is just a, a, a set of, of a, cue, a cue, a behavior, and a reward. That's really all you have, which is what a habit is. So in order to, to get a different result, um, you want to insert, you want to have the same cue, uh, have a different behavior and get the same reward. That's the best way that habits, uh, habit um, change works. So for example, um, let's say your habit is the first thing that you do when your alarm goes off in the morning is you hit the, um, uh, hit the snooze. Like, okay, and then you wait, you know, 10 more minutes go by and you get up again. And you, you finally get up maybe <laughs> sooner or later. Um, one, one thing, you, the, the, what you, and the, clearly the, the cue is the alarm, the habit is hitting the snooze, and then the, or the action, and then the reward is getting to sleep for five or ten more minutes. Let's say you want to get up and exercise. So if you didn't hit the snooze five times, you could have time to do that. So I think the cue would still be your alarm. The habit would be putting your feet on the ground uh, and getting it out of the bed. <laughs> and then the reward is you're going to uh, feel better and you're not going to sleep, but you're going to feel better because you're going to go exercise. So, so you still have the same cue, you still have the same reward, feeling better. Although in this point, in this way, you're replacing the habit of hitting the snooze with the habit of getting up to go exercise. Okay, that's that's how really how uh, habit change can occur. Now, one of the, the critical things about habit change is you, you sometimes if it's a, a negative habit, like let's say losing your temper or or um, other things that are more of a reaction. The first thing you need to do is to notice when those are happening. And then that, that, the first step for really behavior change is having an awareness of when you're having those detrimental habits. Like let's say when you're frustrated, you may eat poorly. And I know when I'm on call, um, that's kind of my excuse to eat poorly. So my, my cue is that I'm on call and my um, habit is to eat poorly. And then my reward is I get, I, I feel better because I, I kind of gave myself a little, you know, break from my usual um, uh, diet, which is fairly healthy. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, fortunately, or, or hopefully someday I won't be on call and then, and then I'll eat better all the time. But what, what you may want to do is you have the cue of being on call. Maybe the habit should be um, to reward yourself with healthy food instead of junk food. And then, or sorry, the, the, um, the behavior would be to reward yourself with that healthy food. And then the result or the reward would be feeling better. So feeling better with healthy food instead of feeling better with poor food. So, but again, noticing where you are with habits uh, are, are critical. And then the, if you take a, a step back from that that very narrow up close uh, analysis of habit change, you wanna maybe work on a keystone habit. So for, for me, my keystone habit was um, changing my my link in productivity it was linked to my ego and um, I had to break that link um, and I still realized that I was a good person without being the most productive partner, although that took a long time to realize and change those habits. Um, I think, you know, there, there are definitely, um, and once I broke that habit, I was able, to, from a keystone habit standpoint, those, I was able to change habits throughout the rest of my life. So it, it, it's, a, it's an important process to go through. I would definitely reference those books. Um, you can uh, look at my book, The Doctor's Burned Out, A Physician's Guide to Recovery. It has a chapter on habit uh, change that is um, uh, more in-depth than this today. And really, uh, the critical thing about habit change is it helps you start to recover from burnout and helps automate some of your behaviors so then you can recover quicker. Um, it's, I think it's a really important part of burnout recovery. So 
Remember, burnout recovery is for you. Jeff Moody, MD, Jeff Moody, MD, Jeff Moody .com. Um, Sign up for our live streams, sign up for my email list, sign up for a Facebook group, get the help you need. And remember always, burnout recovery is for you.